Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Sea Story Cup 3, live from the B stream here. Uh, we're getting ready for a, a match between Life Coach and Maverick. I'm joined by RDU, and uh, RDU is here to cheer on his teammate, as well as drop some knowledge bombs, because uh, I actually enjoy RDU's casting one well, of the most of any of the players. So as uh, when he said RDU, he's like, Frodan, do you want to cast? Uh, do you want to cast with RDU? And I was like, hell yeah. It'd be fun. Thank you a lot, Frodan. Yeah. yeah. I that think people sense. don't. I think people might, you know, be of course caught up in the fact that you know, are you? You're very opinionated player. You like to say what things that you think are right and wrong. But I personally think it's very enjoyable to listen. All right, uh, and I think we're going to be hopping into the game first. Uh, we had the lineups prepared. We have Paladin, Warlock, Mage, and Druid versus Druid, Rogue, Warlock, and Warrior. So uh, a couple of differences across the board. Paladin and uh, Mage, of course, and instead of what his opponent has is Warrior and Rogue. What do you think about that? I like the I like Life Coach's lineup a little bit more because mm -hmm. he's going to face Warrior. And, well, of course, Maverick's Druid ban was uh, spot on. It's true. It'll be really interesting. Like, Life Coach afforded to ban Rogue with this lineup because Maverick didn't have anything really threatening. And that was, like, insane for him. I'm not sure if the starting deck matters, usually, but I think we'll see a pretty good game. Absolutely, I think so too. I'm just trying to promote it. You know, one thing I love about being the B stream is so much. It's like even more chill than the mainstream because the mainstream you still have to do the promotions and push everything. And I really like enjoy doing this commentary because it's also duo instead of trio, so a good mixture of stuff. Uh, what do you think is like the good way to actually start off uh, the match here in terms of the classes? Uh, usually, the best way is like as random as possible. Mm -hmm. So your opponent doesn't counter you, so you just go for the 50-50 anyways, and he just, doesn't have any edge. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter too much in Conquest, at least, because you only can win once. Yes, but it, it, it's like really difficult to say here what they will start with. is like personal preferences or just randomness or just some thinking. I, I don't know. Like I, I like the bands. The bands part, of course, requires a lot of skill and mm -hmm. knowledge about the game. And... I'm really eager to see the games. I want to see how Warrior does. I know Warrior is more popular in France than it is in the rest of the Europe. Like, personally, I don't like Warrior that much. Why is that? Why don't you like Warrior that much? Because I thought people would usually like to build it specifically. Because, like, like, if Warrior has a bad matchup, you can sort of just let it go, couldn't you? Uh, I'm going to spectate. You have to hop on a Mavericks POV. You got to add him, bro. All right, already a little bit behind, but it's okay. Frodan's here to save the day. Mage versus Warrior is what we're going to start off on here. And it looks like it's Mech Mage, a deck that Life Coach has uh, enjoyed a lot. Oh, pfft. Okay, okay, so I'm not used to spectating the games myself, so immediately I clicked on the Antonitis to mulligan away. Because <laughs> this hand otherwise looks uh, pretty decent, I think. This hand is like what you want to see as a Mech Mage. Mm -hmm. Of course, if the Warrior has the Fiery War Axe, it's not that good. Yeah, you know, because you can shut down the Mech Warper. Um, but overall, if he doesn't have the Fiery War Axe, I think, like, the win percentage of Mech Mage like, skyrockets against Warrior, right? Because it's still problematic to deal with all the threats. Uh, you only can usually remove one at a time unless you go for a brawl. Yeah. Maverick has to add us if we want to spectate his hand. Yeah, otherwise it's just a life coach session, a ladder session, like we watch his streams. It's also, it's, we are not biased if we cast only one person because... Because <laughs> we, we only can yeah, focus on this place. Yeah, we only see one hand, and if we see one hand, we'll know if he does the best play or the worst play. No worries, man, it's okay. Yeah. I, I, I guess you saw the, the feedback threads for Firebat the other day, you don't want that to be pinned on you, huh? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, the warrior, there's no chance... Like, so nobody's really bringing anything other than the control warrior, right? We haven't seen mid-range warriors really pop up with the Frothing Berserkers and the Bomb Lobbers. Uh, and of course, we haven't seen people really experiment yet with the Grim Patron. Yeah, we don't, we don't have the added, though. Oh, you can. I can. Oh, you're right. I can, I can spectate both. Here we go. Upside downsies. Oh. Oh, Execute. Mind. Oh, man, that is an ugly hand. Now if Life Coach thinks about it in death, he should go for like playing the curve, 1-1 one, one, and then 2 and then 3. It's like super insane. But he doesn't right. want to risk it. All right. For 2 extra damage, you give him the chance of going for a Clotas Master, which puts you at uh, a bad spot. So I think this is the best play, mathematically. Like. Yeah, fair enough. Now he can still play the clock right now, he doesn't lose anything. Yeah, I guess it does allow the the armor smith though to pick it up. But I guess is that really your main concern? He's already proven he doesn't have fiery war axe. Yeah, it, it don't really care if uh, he picks it up. I think. 
Like, you can just trade a Mech Warper afterwards, and if you trade a Mech Warper, you deny him the Armor Smith, you give him two Armor for an Armor Smith, which sure. is not that great, but you have a good follow-up, the two four force, and then if somehow the Mechs die, you can still play the Spider Tank. In this matchup, you have to need to be super aggressive, but Armor Smith and Acolyte of Pain are the cards you have to kill in this, mm -hmm. to not put yourself in a really bad spot. It's tough then. You really don't want to give an easy trade, but I assume that the spare part also even might be more useful than the Clockwork Gnome itself. Imagine he still had the Antonidas. That would be awesome. It would be, considering he has so many spare parts coming in. Cool Taskmaster is exactly what you're talking about, and that is a, that is a big pickup. Is it? Isn't it? Because now he can clear the Mech Warper and uh, still actually have enough mana to Shield Slam, or I guess he can just clear the Mech Warper, which is the big threat. You don't want him to drop like Piloted Shredder on turn three. I guess he still can because he has a coin. He could have uh, killed it anyways with a Shield Slam if he really wants. He attacks into the Clockwork Elm and then Armor Stop and Shield Slam. Ah, uh, okay. That. That's fair. Be uh, more mana I'm not sure if he's like the best play. It probably is because you deny him the Tinker, the potential Tinker Town Technician. It's really hard to say. Also, it contests um, another minion on the board because it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Or I guess 3-1. So you're going to force him the Clockwork Gnome trade in. And uh, and you still have Execute. So the, putting the Cruel Taskmaster is also two damage body. So even if he picks up an easy trade, you still have an opportunity to gain something on the board and play Acolyte. Yeah, you're right. Oh, he wants to shield some other one. But this permits uh, Life Push just go for the Tinker Town Technician. Yeah. It's... Not bad, although it still allows him to pick up Tinkertown value. Like, if Maverick would have traded in a different way and leave the Cogmaster alive, Life Push couldn't get the Tinkertown Technician value. I I'm not sure if Tinkertown Technician matters that much, because he still had a Sparty Tank or potential coin into 4-drop, so... I, I like the way Maverick played. It's not wrong, it's something differently. Yeah, but on the other end too, is there any spare parts that you're really worried about early on? I guess not too much. If you have execute, you can scale into everything pretty well. I four think four bodies intimidating though. You should be afraid of the switch if you play Belcher, because ah, it dies right. so easily to a free damage card. But in the late game, freezing is the best, obviously, or stealth if you have Antonidas. Antonidas is the king in this matchup. I think yeah. that w with life coach sent sorry, uh, I think he could have also kept Antonidas with what with that curve. Right. I, I might. Have, I, Fair enough. I would seriously consider keeping the Antonidas. Because you need that extra damage against a classic warrior, right? Oh uh, yeah. Mm. You need fireballs to win to win a game. Like, ah, uh, good old life coach. I haven't casted him. So, well, I did cast him actually yesterday. But before that, I haven't cast him in months. And of course, uh, this is pretty much patent at this point. Taking care of that armor smith, high priority. Really crosses his fingers for no death spite. He had the option to go for the cloak field, but I think it's better to save that for now. Of course, of course. Right. That combo with the Antonidas is insane. Plus, you might be able to use it with like Lotheb or some if you're trying to push for lethal. The more I think about it, the more I think he should have kept Antonidas. He had like perfect curve for the first two turns. That means that you have like free draws, I think. Yeah, free draws to get a free drop mm -hmm. and or, or a two drop or a one drop or whatever to just complete your end. Uh, Fair enough. Co continue your curve. So I think keeping Antonidas in that hand was not bad with the coin, but I'm not really sure. Like, Life Coach has his good reasons for what why he's doing the plays. That's why he's probably at the moment I think he's number one on Ghost of Gamers at least. Yeah, I think Strife Crow got the throne after a couple of uh, missteps and tournaments, especially considering that Strife Crow also got fourth place in his group here at Seed Story. So I think that after I beat Strife Crow in the last tournament, he dropped uh, under Life Coach. I mean, we can we can check between games as well. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Uh, Frostbolt number two, That's not not the most uh, appealing. Card. Yeah, he wants Spider Tank here. If he plays Spider Tank and Maverick has a bad draw, he might not have a turn five play, which is like super awful as a warrior player. You always want to have a turn five play. It's like super insane. You just want to play every, anything possible on every turn. Missing the first few turns isn't nearly as punishing though as this mid game stage because then they build up the board again. Wow, that is something to play. How do you play it? I mean, your hand's not looking too too sexy, man. I think you need a cool Taskmaster to give that Acolyte a makeover. And it picks up a Fiery Borax, so we can clear the board. Uh, I mean, wouldn't you want to deny any mech synergy, Tinkertown or Blast Mage? Yeah, but it's like super bad value, but it's really hard to say. Yeah, at least it pays for itself. And you have the Emperor next turn, so if you don't play the Axe this turn and set up to kill off whatever, when are you going to play it? Now you play the axe, but I'm thinking of ignoring that. It depends heavily on if he runs Alessazar or not. If he runs Alessazar, of course, go for the clear. Okay. 
you know, brawl. So he, that's a really standard control warrior that only has the emperor as a six drop. Which cannot... does it benefit that much though off of it? Do you uh, just like replace a shield maiden and then? I know the like... only good warrior build I, I saw after the patch mm -hmm. and that, the one that I liked and loved and played on ladder too. I even got top ten once with it. It was the lace uh, warrior with floating berserkers. I really, right. It's like super mid range ish because you can like rush your opponents down and do some mm -hmm. nifty mid game combos and just drop the big um, frottings and grow them, grow them, grow them and then finish them. Yeah. With this version of Warrior, it's really slow. You depend a lot of, on draws, like as you can see, no turn, no, no good turn five play. I, I don't like to depend on draws. That's why there's like uh, Mech Mage or just something more aggressive is better. You have more consistent draws and that helps you a lot sometimes. Well, as we say that, uh, I think a good example just came up. Life Coach picked up a minion that fits the curve, and he can also defend it onto the board, or he can go build it up. He can play a Spire Tank and develop the Tinkertown Technician. Both uh, both plays still put reasonable threats onto the board. Yeah, it's really hard to see if you, if you, he will Frostbolt or if he will coin the Tinkertown. Both plays are probably good and correct. Mm -hmm. Frostbolt is safer. Um... Is coin really that versatile? I guess if you have Antonides, you can coin uh, uh, and use the cloak field. And that would be nuts. Yeah, that's why I said you should keep Antonides right. with, with the coin. With a good curve. There's a big chance you hit your perfect curve when having already the first two turns. It's completely fair. Turns. What Emperor does do is allow him to play Gromash next turn and make sure that smooths out the curve. So interestingly enough, even though it's a little bit low impact relative for the card's expected power level, it still has a uh, significance. Yeah. Not really sure. This hand mm. is weird. You can just play the Yeti and Frostbolt. Right. What do you think of Frostbolt ping and then ping again? I don't like it on the Emperor because you give him one more turn for value, but usually that's a pretty good play for Mech he, Mages. He doesn't have that many cards though, right? So it's like, is he truly benefiting a ton? How can he punish you the most? He just uses Acolytes, right? There's no way for him to get really good card draw. I'm I guess sure. it'd be scary if you like decrease the cost of Alex Straza, because then it's like you know he has like a way to save himself from damage. Or <laughs> nah, even then Alex Straza is only 15. I don't know how problematic it is if he's only reducing two or three cards per turn. I know if you put me to choose between being Life Coach and Maverick, I would choose to be Maverick right now, just because the Gromash can allow you a full board clear, and that's like so awesome. Well, we know we know the cards in hand, so I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, like knowing the cards, of course. Now he's thinking of trading, and he's trading because he wants to unite the value. Yeah. Wow. It's fair, but he's also giving up a lot of uh, that opportunity. Top, that top deck is really good. Yeah, now he's shield block shield slam for only three mana. He can develop uh, anything else. He picks up four or less. Pilot to Shredder? Uh, mm. Never lucky. Maybe he doesn't even run Pilot to Shredder. Yeah, it's a fair <laughs> uh, assumption. Oh, both, both get gets the cool in. Antonides can still win the game for life coach at any point. Yeah, that, that, oh, that's also really impactful too. That's why this deck is fun. Fun, huh? That's one way to describe it for a player. Unfortunately, Tinker Town gets shut down easily by that axe, so he's choosing to hold on to until he can benefit off of getting yet another spirit part. And that is an excellent draw for Maverick 2 to activate the mirror entity. Yep. Really good stuff here from Maverick, being able to stabilize. Is Control Warrior generally favored, or is it like 50-50, or is it a disadvantage you think it gets Mech It depends Mage? how you build a Mech Mage. If you build a Mech Mage with Pirate Sky Golem, or with like Water Elemental Blink Drone, you are favored. And if you bring it, build it without, it depends on the Fire Warrior Axe. And did Maverick have the Warrior Axe? He didn't. No, he actually drew the War Axe in the mid-game no with the Acolyte play. Yeah. I know. I think you should be favored as a Mech Mage. Usually. Mm. Like now he can still freeze the Sylvanas, but that's awful. You don't want to see Sylvanas. Sylvanas is too good. Yeah, because you delay it and you're not even freezing the mage for tempo to do damage. Um, and he also has uh, the, the armor smith, so he can start gaining life back. And even if you do get Antonidas, you have the damage to kill your opponent. A lot of questions, but... At the same time, um, we've seen comebacks from the Mech Mage. If it can get Dr. Boom, clear the board, get Antonite, and do a lot of damage. The hand of Warrior is still relatively feeble. Yeah, anything can happen. That's why Mech Mage is good. I still don't think he's the best because people expect it. Like on ladder, I think Mech Shaman is way better. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, revealing some trade secrets. People don't know, but RDU is actually ranked number one in Europe at the moment on ladder. And Frodan is number 15 on the I'm, number, I'm ranked number 15, but there's only like 100 legends, so it's not, that, it's not terribly impressive. <laughs> yeah, still. No shame. <laughs> no shame for ladder points. Ladder matters in the last days of the season, so I don't bother that much about it. Right. It's still cool. It's still cool because you get to feel like, ah, yeah, I'm ranked number one at the moment. Get to make the post. Uh, Rusty Horn again, not that impactful unless uh, he can buy time. Like he can say this Armorsmith wouldn't die immediately. Then he could use it to taunt up and push more damage. But that Sylvanas in a turn will definitely continue to wreck. Not to mention that he can brawl and make sure that he wins the brawl because Sylvanas is on the board. What do you think of top decking Antonidas and getting four fireballs? <laughs> Even then, I'm like, is Warrior going to die? Yes. I think so, like... Ah, this looks really sketchy. Maverick is it okay if you brawl and Belcher here? I guess it's a little bit too greedy. Too greedy, yeah. Yeah. But Maverick has a reason for bringing Warrior. We may consider it an underrated class, class but the French yeah. players know what they do. They have like their diff their separate community. And right. They're pretty isolated. It's like um, it's kind of like China in a way. It's like pe people have their own isolate. Like, people don't really know much about what's going on. Why do you laugh, are you? I don't laugh. You are laughing. You you can't even stop smiling at this moment. No, but you're a terrible actor. How can you compare France with China? Like China is like way bigger in like. Players. Well, I'm saying in the there's the community like oh. in the sense that. But is China isolated from the rest of Asia? Uh, sort of. I guess not too much from, like, Korea. I guess from... Yeah, it is. Taiwan has... And Korea and, like, all of them are lumped in through one thing. China has its own server, too. Wow. That's cool. So, it's it's different. I mean, there's a reason why four players are coming from China and four from Asia and Pacific region. I know that the French people have, like, a lot of high-ranked players. Maverick, one of them. Yeah. Like, they always finish... The issue. They always finish really high on Legend. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it's interesting because they have all their, you know, their communities on a different streaming yeah, service. Yeah, they play else. some different decks. They play different metas, I think, but somehow it works. They just come in our meta and beat us. Yeah. Although Kalento just went to a French tournament and destroyed everyone with Priest. That's what inspired me. I was like, oh, that Kalento's Priest is pretty good. And I thought the French like to be aggressive sometimes, too. So I was like, ah, it should work out okay. Kalento knows what he is doing, so bringing Priest probably was the best call in that Fair French enough. tournament. In, like, a big open tournament like that, too. Like, if they love Warrior... Oh, actually, yes, in a big open, in an open tournament, Priest is really good because if you think you're more high-skilled and you play perfectly, you can just grind people down with Priest. They don't expect it. They know how to play perfectly around it. It's just the best deck. Mm. And if Colento plays it perfectly, as we know, he'll probably just win it. Like, he won it already. It's true. Now, even if you play perfectly in this scenario, really tough decisions from Life Coach. Oh. Ysera comes into the hand, and that can just straight up card advantage, uh, or sorry, bring back the card advantage into Maverick's favor, because before he was just struggling to make sure to draw everything on time, but now it seems like he's gotten big minion after big minion here. Yeah, I saw his, I saw Isera last time in Show's deck. I think Show got number one in Europe some time ago. I dethroned him today. Uh huh. And then I think he played the game and lost it because he was like 11. But Isera is definitely not bad. People cut Alex for Isera because they can just beat hunters by uh, making the game longer right. with defensive tools. And then in the control versus control, you win because you have Isera. So also Isera is a dragon if you have the, dar the dragon synergy. But I don't think you have it in Warrior. Probably not the best deck to put the Darren Synergy in. Uh, I guess the Blackwing Technician is the only card at the moment, right? The 3-5? Yeah. Or it becomes a 3-5, rather. Cut Acolyte of Pain. Who needs that? Kappa. Yeah, draw is overrated anyways, man. Just you, Would you rather draw a card or have the card that does damage? Have hmm. the card that does damage. Go for the zoo place. That's how you win tournaments. <laughs> that's how you win the World I mean, Championship. That, that's, that's Oh, Snapshots Fire. I mean, Amaz is playing Zoo right now on He's the main street. He's not a fire, like... I play a lot of aggro decks because Firebat inspired me. Like, Firebat was probably the first one that realized that aggro decks are really open, harsh and abused people that played, like, really slow decks. Shrifecro did too, but the problem is, um... Shrifecro didn't all in on the aggro. He, like, brought Zoo and then he brought a few other control decks. Yeah, he's really smart, I think. Yeah. Y you have to do that. It's fair. I'm, I'm also trying to see if I can learn aggro. It's, it's definitely misunderstood. Sometimes aggro can... You know, actually, I think one of my favorite... Um, 
matchups in the current metagame is mech mage versus mech mage. So I think it's actually really interesting with the way spare parts interact and a lot of small things, decisions, snowball the board. It's so like if you play like less than optimally in that mirror, you actually just get blown out almost every time. I think that in mech mage mirror, paladin mirror, hunter, face hunter mirror, if you make a small Yeah, you're weird. Point. You like the face hunter mirror, man. I don't like it. I, I don't you know said why. it was your favorite matchup in the entire game. Yes, it was, but oh, like you, I saw you, you and Monk were saying, I, like I rewatched the games, and you were saying that it's my favorite class, and I didn't play it like for like one season, like one whole season. Yeah, but we, we, well, Monk's a thought that you ranked in like top legend. Did you like finish fourth or something? I finished fourth. I finished yeah. sixth with. Uh, I only played L Rogue, and in the last day I played Priest, and I went six zero with Priest in the last day. Sick. So you got that's why you got the top ten. And you got 30 points for that? I played Rogue one game and then Priest. Yeah, I combined right. Priest with... I got that, 40 I mean, points. We assumed that... Or Monk said that you uh, played Hunter to top of Legend. And, you know, Monk, Monk's usually right about that kind season of stuff. Season 1. Season 1, I ended... I played only Hunter. And then... It so in January? Six, yeah, in January. Okay. Then Season 2, I streamed in the last day. I don't blame stream snipers. <laughs> And I didn't finish yeah. well. And then uh, in the in the third season, I just didn't stream and I played Priest and Rogue and I ended on number six. That's pretty cool, dude. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, this game is sort of locked out until Life Coach draws into a big bomb. I, I think don't think over. he has a chance. Like, he's dead. He's lethal, yeah. Because the Yasera awakens. At least he has a Gromash. That's right. I mean, he could sequence this improperly and mess up, but I'm pretty sure he's got this. Can you think the counter spell? Yeah. And uh, that's gonna runs. do it. Okay. Ooh, Could I like it. it. Ysera awakens to to end it. Nice. All right. Well, that wraps up game number one. And Life Coach unfortunately got uh, pushed out of the game by Warriors Resilience. I mean, just look at how much HP the game ended on. It was like forty something for Maverick. So not even close. All right. So uh, that means Mavericks Warriors out. Sorry about the monitor repositioning. We didn't want to cover RDU's beautiful face, but it happened to because RDU forgot to add the players. Just cancel and rejoin. All right. That's what the the notification I got. Okay. Do you know much about Maverick? He's actually Belgian, right? Or is he French? I think I'm pretty sure he's Belgian. Even if he's Belgian, I think he, he still is in the French community considered. Okay. Like he's in Team Millennium, and Millennium I mean, is for France. I'm gonna go ahead and look it up. Yeah, but he's in a French team, so he's also in the French community. Right. Fair enough. Makes sense. All right. Well, uh, taking a look at uh, the lineups here, if he has Druid and Warlock remaining against Paladin Warlock Mate Mech Mage, there's still like a problematic thing because I feel like all these decks can target the Druid and give it a hard time. Mech Mage, Paladin still is okay. And then, uh, no, 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 Paladin Warlock. is like super good versus Druid. You think so? Hype was telling me, like, originally I thought so too, Paladin was good, but Hype was saying that since uh, Druids can keep up right now with Paladin because of like Emperor and stuff. That you need to get lucky. You need to get like, lucky. You can't see the game versus Trifor. I was super lucky, like that um, Savage Roar into BGH Sylvanas to steal a Tyrion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually that's cool. It's like a really balanced game, and like Tyrion just destroys you. It's just because. I think the way he was explaining it was that Emperor Druid benefits off Emperor way more than Paladin, so if you can get that, the tempo swing on it is really powerful. I'm not really sure. Like, I think I like Paladin more. I would okay. put Paladin on 60-40 at least. Originally, I thought Paladin was great against Druid, too. He's also saying that because Humility and all those other decks that, or sorry, combos that used to do, I guess, Kodo and stuff, uh, used to be really good against Druid, but now they don't play it. It, de it depends um, how you build your deck. Of course. Yeah, fair enough. So we're going into the game soon. Yeah, all right. So here oh, we go. Paladin Deus versus Druid. Druid. We were talking about that. <laughs> Life coach got the matchup well. All she right. doesn't want to give the free win to the Druid. Okay. All right. Time to activate. Uh... Oh, I guess I can't spectate both hands at the same time. Both yeah, you cannot both spectate time. both mulligans. So, yeah, you keep Master for battle. It always apl applies a lot of pressure, even if your opponent has swipe, let's say. Ma Master for Battle is, is still insane. Because he doesn't know if you have um, Quarter Master, so he will use swipe, and he uses a 4 mana card for a 3 mana card, giving you a lot of tempo. Sure. Oh, actually, are we spectating, Maverick? No, I'm pretty sure I want to keep spectating, bro. Just quit and uh, rejoin. All right, well, I guess we're just going to have to sit on this for a while. Coin Wild Growth. You can rejoin, I think. Just quit and rejoin. Shall I rejoin? I'll rejoin. All right, one second, guys. 
No, 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 not life coach. It's the same difference. All right, uh, we're gonna hop on life coach. Okay. Yeah, just go one by one. And then hop on the Maverick. Yep. So uh, you know, if Druid gets that early game tempo through the wild growth, oh, I guess you don't gain too much. You gain the extra mana, but you might lose tempo on the board. I think um, the, the way, sorry, the, the way you win as a druid is by like playing solitaire. You just play your stuff, play your stuff at the pot and deal with it, and then you combo him. That's the only way you can win. If they have it, they have it. That's why how I play it. I just play my stuff. I just puke my board, my isn't hand. That, isn't that how you beat most decks as druid, to be honest? Like, I know we, we scoff at that a little bit, but it's like, very rare that you're trying to... Like, you basically control the board and build your own stuff so you can combo them out of the, the game. Yeah. I guess the only exception is Face Hunter, because you're just trying to survive. It depends how you play. You can just rush Face Hunter and raise them. True. Like now, Maverick is forced to swipe. Even though he still has one more turn, he doesn't have a good turn for play. So he'll just take the swipe now and develop Fair the board next turn. His hand is not that great. I, I don't think you attack with the Shade because your Life Coach goes on turn four and he can use the True Silver. It's like now, if he thinks the value of the Shade, is better than the value of one true silver attack and three to and three attacks of the one mana weapon, then you attack with the shade. And now life coach will attack if he thinks that one attack from the true silver and three attacks from the currently equipped weapon. I mean, it's still not insanely high. Although conveniently enough, true silver did get drawn. It will get stopped by the belcher though. Like if you think mathematically, he gained value on the Master for Battle because Maverick used the uh, four mana card to deal with the three mana card. So he got the value of one mana plus the one free weapon. And that means that you can use that value that you got to use the True Silver to get more value right, there. Right, so you, you, so you cancel it out effectively, right? You don't even cancel it out. You, get, you cancel it out and then you have the plus one mana from the swipe. You right, isn't that he's just wasting the, the mana charge, though, of the weapon? No. Because the Light's Justice is like the one mana card. Is that like, what you're trying to say? I, I try to say that you cancel it, but you still have the True Silver. One, oh, one more okay, charge. okay. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you, I mean, you still have a pretty powerful thing on board, too. Oh, he doesn't have to do that. So he values the weapon more. He values the current for one free weapon. That's interesting. I've, I've rarely seen players value that. Like, just they'd rather play True Silver and kill something off. True Silver is hard to guarantee value against Druid sometimes um, because there's so many minions just outside that four attack range. Maybe he was expecting a Druid of the Clone on turn six and yeah. he wants to deal with it. No, it's very intelligent to make that because turn five is usually impactful in that capacity. Or even if they have Innervate again and they Innervate like, you know, seven mana minion, you have to have something to deal with it. So I, I actually like it. In fact, this handles almost anything within Maverick's range. If he plays a reasonable minion at five, if he plays, he can deal with it with two silver champion. If he plays like big um, Dr. Boom, he has big game hunter and he has a weapon to do one damage to boom bots. So this is a very intelligent uh, decision, I think. Do you think it's good to trade? I think I would have one face there. I'm not really sure. Well, I know Life Coach wanted that because <laughs> he wanted his opponent to choose between hero power and developing something on the board too. Yeah, life card does a lot of uh, plays like this, where he puts his opponent in standard in a bad spot. But here, we, he has all the situational cards in his hand. That's really unlucky. Well, I mean, it's true silver that situational. It's generally okay against this. Like, like you play it receiver, and then you need to top deck something that you can play on turn six. I was talking with Ty Tides of Time in WC WEC in China, mm -hmm. where he was the best player in the world. And he explained to me that if you have too many situational cards, you will probably end up losing. What is this play? That's really weird. Just playing something on curve. <laughs> that's, and that's cashing actually, in value on the... Uh... He's cashing in the value with the weapon. Like, no, Maverick is going to trade into the 3-3 free free because he's really juicy. Then you trade a 1-1 one, one weapon into the 3-1. Right. And then you trade a 2-2 two, two Divine Shield for the 1 to Slime. And then you still have the true silver potential on turn... Turn uh, 7. Turn 6. Well, I mean, you'd be attacking with the weapon, with the Light's Justice. You, so you can still like, keep it. it just to use the mana now. Oh, also, also, if he attacks face, he can choose over that thing down too. Yeah. So say he uh, say he holds, but Mafia he goes for another value right. trade. Trade. It's like they play arena. Yeah. It's like all they're trying to do is outvalue each other and really make uh, their opponent uncomfortable, which but, is really funny. Like now, life coach is just gonna throw silver. For sure, throw silver hero power. You trade. Right. It's perfect trade. That like just has actually had some pretty good mileage on it, surprisingly enough. It's kind of like having a druid hero power all the time. Cause you're just doing that plus one damage to everything. That's why I don't like double equality that much. It can be junky sometimes. It's true. 
I, I first thought cutting one of the qualities was like, you know, completely mind boggling because isn't that one of the best parts about playing Paladin? The fact that you have like, it's like people used to say Paladin was the king of control because you had a qualities. Now but, you go more mid range yeah. Now you go for that since Muster for Battle allows you to scale so well. I saw a guy getting number one like some time ago. He played like zero equalities or one equality. And then he even cut BGH, he cut anti heal, but he cut out all the tech cards and just put uh, good cards. Like he played Blessing of Kings, he played Ragnaros over Leon Hands. That's sick. I like Blessing of Kings. Mm. Rag over Leon Hands, Blessing of Kings over Ra over BGH. Mm -hmm. I, I tried that too, he's like so good. And the deck was really good like two months ago. I guess what, what was it good against? Um, everything. No way, everything? Back when Sixo was playing Zoo, he was also playing that Paladin. I think his chance is build. A really good NA player. Oh, uh, yeah. I heard of Chance. I uh, haven't seen him play too much other than people's streams. I saw a Reddit uh, post that he made that uh, the system is uh, imbalanced. Not sure if he made it or he commented on that. Another, another discussion for a different time, RDU. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the implications of that. Because we can talk about it for the while, but we can talk about this Ancient of Lord top deck. Perfectly on curve. Is it Drawing perfect? the cards. You can trade a hero power and a, and the weapon to kill the... Edge of the floor, but I suppose so. You don't really want to trade with a druid player because you give them a lot of value if you trade. So it was really definitely better than anything else he had because uh, if he didn't have that, say he drew like another combo piece instead, he would have had to play Shade or play the same exact minion but weaker because he wouldn't draw cards. Emperor Thursday would have had like three cards in hand to reduce, and one of them's Wild Growth. Yes. Wow, Knife Jacker Master for Battle Equality. Oh, baby. <sighs> Yikes, and he's not even losing too much on board. He has two equalities too, that's one of the ways you can capitalize on it. What do you think of being greedy and holding this for one more turn? Holding the, oh, the combo? Yeah. And then what would you do instead? Just hero power. Just be hero a, power and, and, and... Actually, you can BGH to bait him to play Ragnaros. Oh, I get it. So you play the big game hunter to make him feel like he can play a big minion. Yeah, and then you go and then equality, equality juggler. But then what if you miss all the juggles? Then you just not play juggler, you just play, I don't know, Goblin Sapper. I don't know how, how his name is. The two free stealth. Oh, Giblin Stalker. You can play the Raptor if you don't feel lucky with juggler. <laughs> Good value. Well, uh, let's see. That would be, I mean, it's so perfect because it's seven mana now, too. You'd be doing it on curve. All right, so he doesn't use a quality. He's going to go for maximum jugglage. What would you think? If Blizzard would implement a uh, two mana free free, that, that, that is like vanilla. To give people option of not playing with RNG. <laughs> would you use that? Uh, maybe. Oh man, he really needs to decide quick. 50 50 boys. Oh man. Didn't attack? Oh, he did attack. Wow, squeeze it in. I mean, we're talking to the master of the rope here. He's tamed it. I think it was better to attack the minion, but the animation was too late. Right. No, so, it definitely was to protect the knife juggler. Yeah. That was the good play. I think life coach would, would have done it, but he wrote. But I'm still impressed he got that attack, and it was really tight. Also, probably because he didn't have enough time to click on it, the animation for the death. That's why you should consider your play faster. I usually try to play really fast. Like, if they would make a fast tournament of Hearthstone, like 10 seconds per turn, I think I would do pretty good in there. Me, tides of time. Oh, yeah, the blitz, the blitz, blitz mode that everyone suggests. The thing about that is um, if, you, if you play that, it's like you have to actually change the, and you have to like have the option to turn animations off because then like classes like rogue they'll they struggle because like everything takes forever to play like the fan of knives and then like the prep stuff and the like everything else yeah and, like sludge belcher becomes way too op we move a bit the map. yeah just trying to make sure i don't get inactive it's good it's good well he crosses his fingers host for no quartermaster quartermaster is impervious to the spell immunity, or the uh, spell blocking of Lothab. Hmm. This is really interesting. Oh. Well, he's hmm. got a quality consecration. Um, the scary equality. thing is that he might die to a combo next turn. Mm. He needs to equality or he dies to combo. Right. Do you think he sees that? I think Life Witcher is the kind of guy that will play around that. Yeah. He's a really good player. He thinks about every single outcome that can uh, happen. If, he's, if he knows his opponent also didn't have swipe, Right, because he would have swiped the board. Yep. Then can he get away with equality and then keeping as many one ones? Or is that too greedy? Because like if you equality, then you can use your weapon to kill off the Lothab instead. 
I think you die. You die if you do oh, that. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. do do that. Okay, never mind. I was miscounting. Five attack shade plus 14, 19. It's exactly right. total. Okay, so uh, then the equality just has to trade one of the one ones. In. Yeah, it's super bad value. Let so it's either you play around combo or you don't. But if you don't play around combo, what do you gain? You don't gain that much. And you have the second equality in consecration, so it's definitely the right play. It's the right mathematical play in life, but you'll definitely go for it, I think. Is there any other play, though? You all OBJH? Nah, yeah. there's no other play. Conveniently enough, that shade will only be a two health minion as well, so... It dies to only consecration yeah, if you really it, he doesn't have to if he, say, if he sees a better board opportunity. And Druid's still struggling for an opportunity to close out the game. Paladin just has the board a little bit too firmly. Unless he wants to trade in that shade next Ramus, he can clear the board then. Druid's hand is not that appealing. Like, life can still win with a Tyrion top deck. Yeah, and I mean, everything is a little bit uncomfortable. The fact that Wild Growth is on nine man at the moment, can't cycle it. I yeah. guess you can just play the Emperor and just cheapen everything. Not to mention, you might be able to draw another Saboteur and have 22 damage combo. Being life coach, you just stop the Batman and you win. I mean, there is Tyr uh, Keeper that go for Tyrion. In fact, you can... Oh my goodness! You can silence with the Keeper and then combo. <laughs> it's not enough. I know, it's just crazy to think about that possibility, yeah, yeah, yeah. though. It's like, what? That's absurd. I really like playing Shredder and BGH and Hero Power, just go all in, that's your only hope. He didn't play Arthur Boom last turn, he would have played it if he had it, he had 7 free mana. You always play Boom over Emperor in this kind of spot, and you probably have the combo already because you didn't right. play anything like last turns. So, Life Coach will think of that and will just YOLO it. He still has the quality Consecration, like you said. Oh, what? Ah, just because they pick it doesn't mean that they're going to play it. Just considering it already. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some people all overreact to that. Yeah. They're like, oh no, 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 don't do that. And it's like, well, you know, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Maybe, maybe, he's, not a, maybe he's not a bad, a bad play. Yeah, he's not a bad play. Mm. Like, not seeing your opponent's hand, Life Coach might think he has, like, Force of Nature, Double Savage, or, which right. almost kills him. I mean, it almost kills him anyway. It's completely valid, considering that his opponent could even draw it, too. Would you play BGH? Because, considering he cannot have Dr. Boon. Personally, I, I'm all about making sure that I can set up a wave to win, and Big Game Hunter definitely gets him closer to that, so... I wouldn't mind dropping it here. Yeah, I love the way Lightpatch is playing. He's always going for the best mathematical play. Right. Like, he's thinking of all this small stuff. You, you, you can mind game him really hard mm -hmm. if you... <laughs> Plus, um, I mean, he might even use the Keeper to completely shut down the Big Game Hunter, and then if he dr draws Tyrion, then it's not as big of a threat anymore. Hmm. Something that Maverick might want to consider, although his opponent's holding one guard. Also, what did he get off that wild growth? Was it Pilot Shredder? Uh, I think so. That's a pretty good draw. Yeah, it's Shredder, it's Shredder because he wasn't uh, cost reduc reducted, I think. Is it called? Oh, oh no, it's Cenarius, which apparently it's a Warlock card in 0-0. Uh, zero, zero. Cenarius got broken. nerfed hard, dude. In fact, when you play Cenarius for 0-0, zero, zero, it dies instantly. <laughs> Does it die? It does, because nothing can have zero health, right? Like Doomsayer reversing switch? Yeah? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> wow, Warlock got nerfed hard. More importantly, what will this impact the metagame? We should uh, reset. Alright, alright, alright. Let's leave. Just leave. And oh, it looks like Life Coach was playing Consecration. I guess it makes sense if Scenarios comes down and then, um... Uh, what's it called? Then you have those two mana, or two, two taunt creatures. Well, guys, uh, sorry about that little bug there. Do you think he got scenarios? I hope the game's not over. Oh, he actually got scenarios. And he, uh, Life Coach had the, the... Sludge Belcher, look at that. No, the Sludge Belcher, the Consecration. Well, yeah, I mean... Expected Maverick, too. We, we saw him playing it just before it left, so it looks like Stri oh. Strife Co Life Coach... He's in a position to close out the game just surely because there's not enough uh, stuff, but there is combo to clear, right? Or if you... Oh, wait. Yeah, he can use the Keeper as well to try and uh, yeah, control the state of the board. If you clear, you'll still die to the second True Silver. How many cards are remaining in the deck? Is this a True Silver? I thought this is Light Justice. The second True Silver. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha. So you die to True Silver? You die to Tyrion? I think. I guess, because he just simply attacks the face. Yeah, like... 
What can uh, Maverick do about Tibian? What else? Um, not really much. I don't really think anyone's playing burst cards outside of that. I think that if he just plays, if he just top decks Sylvanas or Boom, he still wins. I guess. Right. We're really close to that. Not really sure. It will be a really close yep. game indeed. I mean, it's close in the sense that Druid's stabilizing, but there's a l there's still time. Let's because he that. only has seven damage on board, and that's still a couple turns away. Oh, oh. Uh, that's probably like the worst. Draw. Yeah. Actually, it's not the worst because now you attack phase for one. Yes, you draw. And you draw two, two, two cards from the next turn. Yeah. And it also gains you a lot of life <laughs> because he has to use the scenarios to attack into it. He can't use anything else. Oh, yeah, you're right. Can he survive three turns this way? Let's calculate it. So he can take. He takes nothing the next turn and then he will take. Oh, oh man! Dr. Boom, high impact card. Okay, let's see a bit. Hmm. So if he has Dr. Boom and Scenarius stays on board, that is upwards to 15 damage that he can do. The thing is that if you play Dr. Boom and you don't top deck anything next turn, like no damage, he needs to go full face with both and attack your opponent, the one, 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 and ignore the Acolyte. Life Coach will still get uh, one draw from the Acolyte because he will get only one trade out. Ah, you're right. Should he, uh, he also should probably hero power down the one, one to prevent Quartermaster from being lethal, right? Oh uh, yeah, of course. Okay, so... We just boom hero power, the one, one, yep. and you just go for phase because if you trade in the Acolyte, it's not efficient. And actually, if you hero power the one, one, you die to the second Consecration. Oh, uh, you're right. But There's so many... No, no, actually... If you're on lethal next turn, you have to do that, I think. Unless you want to... Oh, be, uh, yeah, I guess the Boombots couldn't do enough damage. I was calculating if he hit next turn. So I was like, it. if, yeah. say, the same exact scenario happens, Consecration still wouldn't even be lethal, because he might actually just die from the Boombots. You might have enough if you trade with Keeper, and you go free up our face. All right, that's a really good compromise, then. Yeah. Good play on both ends. He still dies to True Silver. And Life Coach has two draws to get True Silver. Maybe, uh, maybe, even, maybe even three maybe with even the Boombots. Whoa! Whoa! Tyrion is a pretty big draw here. You definitely trade Acolyte first. Right. And just mash Tyrion in. You want to take out the Boombot? You want to know what's funny? If mm. Life Coach plays Tyrion and Maverick doesn't have a way to deal with Tyrion, he just dies because if he kills Tyrion and doesn't kill Life and, and doesn't kill Life Coach, Life Coach would just weapon up the Ma Maverick's face. But he can kill him if he. Let's see if the Boombots. Oh wait 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 wait. Okay, I'm trying to think about the Boombot RNG because if it hits Tyrion for significant and he can and he only has to use Keeper, would he be able to kill him? Best is four, and then he has like twelve, so that's not enough. He needs top deck swipe. If, if this Boombot hits like the face for four, and then the Boombot hits Tyrion for four, then he can kill him next turn. I think that if the Boombot three. Hits, I think that if the Boombot hits Akolai now, is like, game over unless Maverick top decks. Savage Roar or Taunt. And if he top decks Taunt, Life Coach can still top deck the weapon. Oh, Kazan Mystic. Kazan. Oh, three! Three is possible, man! He just has to hit Tyrion, and Tyrion... The Boombot has to hit Tyrion for four. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really easy. It's like, yeah, just do that. It's 25% and 25% again, right? Yes. Right? Yes, you're right. No, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. he can't use his hero power at all to take down the shield to make <laughs> it better, too. He can if he wants. If he likes. <laughs> Yeah. Honorable Subaru, Seppoku, <laughs> Subaru. <laughs> the twist shot jokes are. Oh high. man, he misses, and uh, unfortunately, he has nothing else he can do to try to increase his chances of survival. What an insanely close game. Yeah, there's nothing. Like he could have drawn Harrison a taunt, some damage, any sort of damage. Right. But Life Coach could have also drawn something for some. Sure. Other than because I'm mystic. The, he goes for the honorable. <laughs> I like it. Die with glory, and that means 2-1 for Life Coach? No, no, he's tied 1-1. 1-1. Man. Really good series. Life Coach. I hope I don't Your miss my game. Your series ages me. <laughs> it would be funny if I miss my game. Oh, uh, no, no, don't you play on this stream as well? No, I play on the main stream, I think. Oh, do you? Who do you play first? Um, Toide. Oh, t uh, is he on a team anymore? I think he's teamless. Oh, gotcha. I got to cancel this as well. I was supposed to send out a tweet like a long time ago, but I'm going to do it now. Does Maverick have a Twitter account already? I think I think so. All right. Uh, I can't find it, so I'm just going to say... Uh, 
one. Uh, God, how do you do German keyboards? Here, here we go. Currently, one one. All right, so uh, it's tied one one. We have Warlock Mage versus Warlock Druid. Now, I'm curious to see if anybody has really brought like um, a, a really good Warlock deck that involves Bane of Doom, because I know a few people were experimenting with it. Do you, has anyone brought it so far? I don't think. Oh, I think yes. Uh, I know number guy was. Uh, oh, but he's out of the was tournament. Re he was really salty because his opponent, I think Alesh, got uh, Malganis from Bane of Doom. Oh, and he no, pounded no. the desk, Six right? Either Malganis or Sixo. Sixo. Uh, was uh, it Sixo? Sure. Because I remember someone here. No, we Sixo were, got it. Sixo got it. We were in another room, and then we heard someone just like, "Yo, are you kidding me?" And they like pounded the desk. <laughs> it was. Oh, twice Doomsayer out of the Private Shredder. That's apparently what happened. I think Sixo, got, Sixo was, take, was saying us that he got Mulganis, but then his opponent had BGH. So it was that's his hilarious. worst one. Uh, that's funny. He said he preferred the Because that's the only demon that can get... Oh, no, I guess Adam... Illidan. Wait, uh, huh? Illidan is worse. Illidan, that's right. That's and what he said called. that he had an imp on the board, so because he got that plus two, plus two for one turn, he's better than Illidan. But yeah. he was the second worst one. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Oops. Sorry. Uh, looks like we're going to go into game number three, and it looks like to be Mage versus Warlock. Yeah, here we go. This is going to be interesting. It, we first need to see what, what type of Mage, of Warlock, sorry, Maverick is playing, and afterwards we can see how's it going. All right. Well, Life Coach seemed to have mulliganed uh, for pretty much a facet curve. All right, and uh, looks like we have a pretty basic handlock setup so far. I mm -hmm. mean, there could be demons in this deck as well, but generally speaking, um, I, I, I think Strife Post version is the best for this. He got number one in A a couple of days ago, and he's mixing the handlock with the demons, and that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, he's been doing that for a couple weeks, actually. I was watching his stream, and he said that he doesn't know which build is probably the best at the moment after the right. patch, but he'll test out and find it. What I really like about Strife Crow was the fact that he thought he could take out Mountain Giants to play uh, other cards, and then even specifically take out Doomguard to put in Dread Infernal. That was really cool. Um, not sure if he's feeling that now, considering that a lot of things have changed. Plus, Demon Demon's got a little bit better with Imp Gang Boss, because I think that card's really nuts. Yep, it's a really cool card. It's crazy. Like, you always think, you always kind of underestimate it. It's like, yeah, you know, uh, Imp Gang Boss, 2-4, it's like an Imp Master, but no, that card's so hard to deal with. How does it affect uh, with Swipe? Do you get Oh, that's after? a good question. Because does it spawn after the Swipe or before? I guess I guess maybe because it, I think it spawn, I guess, I guess swipe, swipe does kill it. Four. Well, wouldn't the natural logical progression, because Hearthstone's always about things being played first. So if like Death Battle played first, it triggers first. So maybe if M Gang Boss was played first, since it's because it's played first and you swipe after it, it should activate before the swipe fully does it. Okay. Or maybe, no, actually I think it's the other way around. Probably because... Um, it's really interesting, I think. Yeah. It'll be interesting until we see it once and everyone's like, oh, of course, it's common sense. Stupid the, cast. The chat said this spawns after. Okay. We Fair believe enough. T chat. We believe you guys. All right. Well, Life Coach sees that it's Handlock, and there is a Mountain Giant and Twilight Drake. So, because he has an opportunity to play Mirror Entity and disrupt that turn four play, you have to. he can make it problematic. Again, Life Coach, you go for the Mathematic. Oh, what? Mm. I think Mirror Entity is better versus um, Warlocks. They can really punish you. Like the, if you play. Entity on turn three, you lose all your free oh my. free turn, and then they can play Ancient Watcher and deny you the value, but they also right. deny themselves the best powerful turn. Right, and it gives you more time to build. Although technically it's scary because uh, the Shadow Flame possibilities with uh, Ancient Watcher thereafter is really high. Twilight Drake comes down as a, a huge Injured Blade Master equivalent, but uh, this gives an opportunity. Uh, as uh, the pilot shredder can also come down here. I don't think you're too occupied with having to deal with the Drake, right? Yeah, Especially I, if you have Antonitis, you want to be able to try to stack damage, yeah. maybe going for the burn kill. Well, going for shredder is probably not the best play because then he can just turn into your shredder and your shadow flame, and you should expect that. Fair enough. But then what's the alternative? Mirror entity? I know. Frostbolt for tempo? <laughs> it's really weird and hard to play in these kind of situations. Dang. Wow, RDU dropping the real insight, saying Mech Mage is hard to play. 
No, but this is actually completely true. This one's tough. It could go either way. With Dr. Boom and Anton the same coin, on the, on the first hand, you get a huge value if you coin out the Dr. Boom, mm -hmm. but you're on the coin front on Anonidas. Right. But you don't have any spare parts. I guess you can consider Dr. Boom 7 and then Archmage is like, uh, eight. yeah, an 8 because you can use coin to do something else on that turn and get the guaranteed. Is it worth to lose a fireball like that? Life Coach goes for the risk. He risked it two times. He risked it the first time by not playing the entity. I mean, I like it considering that he has possible ways oh. to... Ooh, that was nice. That like was nice. That. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I didn't think of that. Oh my god, that was really nice. Because now the... Um, the, the the Drake can't get that co easy collect with an AoE down. Yeah. Oh my god, that was really insane. Mm -hmm. uh, I was considering trading the Scientist to just get a secret if he... Right. But that doesn't, doesn't make any sense because he just... do nothing. By, by freezing the Drake. Yeah, that's a really cool play by Life Coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still problematic though <laughs> in the long run. Like now he can Entity and Frostbolt. But does he want to Frostbolt? See, if he Frostbolts, he can get past the Belcher Actually, relatively can, painlessly. You can Tinker Town and Frostbolt. Not Tinker sure. Town and Frostbolt also is good. I think I do like that uh, Mirror Entity to be held because he has a Mad Scientist on board. And, uh, you know, you can even train the Mad Scientist now, keep the Cogmaster alive. So many plays. Yeah, I guess whatever spare part comes out is going to be highly relevant for the Antonius as well. If he gets a really good one like the stealth, he might just he might even not consider not time rewinder. Not... Oh. oh my goodness! He might not play Doctor Boom next turn. He might just hold it. That's yeah. the way he win. Like how how is the handler gonna deal with that? He needs a giant shadow flame or low tip. Uh yeah, he need a he needs a giant shadow flame or low tip. You're right. And even then, what like, like sometimes it's funny because if. If they have like additional spare parts, sometimes they get like two. So then it's kind of like Miracle Rogue in the past, right? Where like you lothed and then they would conceal again, which was like the most annoying thing ever. I know I like what she's doing. That it's really cool play. So he's going for the secret now. If Maverick has an Ancient Watcher, he will play now and pop the secret. And then Life Coach next turn goes for the Entity again. If Maverick plays an 8-8 or something really big, Life Coach just makes the trade into the 8-8 and then plays Antonides coin stealth, and that way he secures his Antonides coin stealth. Playing you said there. that really fast, RDU. That was almost Firebat fast. Firebat talks really quickly when he's explaining plays. All right, so he he plays, he trades this in and saves the Frostbolt because... He, he wants to go for, like, now if Maverick has an Ancient Watcher to destroy the secret, Life Coach will just replay the secret until uh -huh. Maverick will play something big. If Maverick, like, Maverick's only way with, uh, to deal with Antonida's stealth is something big. Right. If, Life, if Life Coach plays Entity two, two turns in a row, he will deny that something big for sure. And that will uh, allow okay. him to play... So then he secures his turn seven. Yeah, he okay, secures okay, the gotcha. fireball. He secures the fireball. And also, uh, I guess he makes AoE weaker by putting in the minions a little bit. So that way he doesn't have to uh, worry too much about losing value on that. Yep. Now, does he play Frostbolt or does he continue developing the board with Spider Tank? Well, you know... The spider tank is resilient against the Hellfire, especially considering that he can kill off the whole board, so that he forces his opponent to have that Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame, and then, like you said, secure turn seven because it's not playing the big minion. Plus, he uses Shadow Flame already, right? You want him to use the AOE, but like Shadow Flame, I don't think he to shut it, it down. No, it's like you want to force him to use yeah, yeah. it earlier. You want to force him to use it, but if you want to force him to use it, you might just ignore the board and just go for face. True that. But as I said, he plays by playing Entity twice in a row, he denies the eight mana cards, the eight right. attack cards, and that's the only way he can deal with Antonida Stealth. So he is really valuing the Antonida Stealth. So that's how right. one spare part can make you play totally different. If without that, I think he would still have the Scientist alive or something like that. And you know, the Mountain Giant is going to cost a little bit too much too. If it was three, then it could be Shadow Flame regardless. But now it costs only four, and there's not enough mana for Maverick. So it's still another awkward spot that uh, Life Coach is putting the Handlock player because of this Mirror Entity. And then Maverick, in the same time, like now he has to worry about this, uh, this Mirror Entity again. How does he deal with it? He doesn't have anything small. He has only some Fury, I think. Yeah, Sun Fairy Protector up here seems to be his only course of action. Um, I guess he has Heal Bot number two. Heal Bot number two. You give Max to the Mech Mage. <laughs> I mean, he already has two mechs anyways. I was just saying. I guess there's also this off chance it could be counter spell too. Because some people very rarely run it. Mm. 
I saw Lothar running it, and that's all. Yeah, so you know, I was saying it's seldom ran. People don't run it often. I, I think, think I also saw um, Strifeco run counter spell one time. Life coach likes consistency. Doom save. Doom save is not even bad. Secures the empty Secures board. the Antonitis. <laughs> you get an Antonitis. Wait, wait. Are you sure that the Antonitis is safe though? I guess you're saying that. Um, Actually, he's not safe if he right, doesn't play anything. So yeah, the Mountain Giant can be cheap enough to Shadow Flame if he only plays one card here. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe he expected Maverick to play more. Actually, if Maverick doesn't play anything, I think you just Dr. Boom. Yeah. I think you just Dr. Boom now. Not really sure if Anaya is the best play. I like Dr. Fair Boom enough. more. Dr. Boom to bait the removal. Yeah. Plus, it gives you extra mana to use the Antonitis as well. Yeah, he should play around the Mountain Shadow Flame. Like, just playing Dr. Boom is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. He can just play Antonitis Frostball next turn again, the value. Yeah. Or just straight up Antonitis, Cloak Field, and, you know, it gives him more options next turn. Yeah. The alternative is, uh, I mean, the alternative is to play the Antonitis now if he can calculate the damage necessary. Because next turn, if he collects two for fireballs, he can have 12. And right now, he can put his opponent down to 22. And nah, that's, that's still really far away. So I guess Dr. Boom is your best bet. Plus, Boombots, man. Boombots can, can do some pretty funky things. Dr. Boom from Life Coach, really well played. What to do? I mean, I, I feel like Maverick's also making sure to take... Like, being able to squeeze in some life taps and make sure to uh, have as big a hand as possible while still being reasonably okay on board is really nice. Both mirror have been used, so now he's free to, to do whatever he wants in terms of playing a minion. Yep. Uh, that was Lothab drawn. This game can still go either way, I think. I, I, did, I didn't like that much trading with a 3-4 spider tank. You put him in mortal coil range and you put, him, you put all your board in hellfire range. But I don't think it matters because life coach things like this. Like if, if he wants to use removal on his on his board, he can just replay the board and he'll be in the same spot he was again. Right. So I don't think he cares. Yeah, like now he, he'll just. He can take his time. I, I still don't think you play Antonidas. You don't. You think he doesn't play Antonidas? No, you just develop the board again. Sure. So then play the pirate shredder and the spire tank. Yeah. It's still a reasonable uh, pressure on board. Right now you have six, and you're about to almost double that. A little bit more, actually. Antonidas is insane next turn. Three fireballs. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You might even pick up something else. Yep. So, pretty Three nice. guaranteed fireballs. That's cool. It's like That enough. is cool. After, and after two anti-kill bots. That's a lot. That's what you need. And the Siphon Soul. True. Does Maverick have any heal? He might have one more for a seer, I think. And the load them, of course. I guess if you count Jarax as heal. Oh, he just goes for it. He can go for a double fireball. I, I don't see why you wouldn't. He just used Siphon as well. I guess I would like to see the stealth, though. I, I mean, and also Maverick is playing around the possibility of stealth, too. Points. He's been doing a really good job making sure not to overcommit. Like, it's so easy to want to clear a board like this, right? So you can feel safe. Wait a second. Does Life Coach have lethal if he goes for... Oh, never mind. If he could go for like coin frostbolt and attack the hold the board and then have double fireball in his hand, and Maverick yeah. would like go giant shadow flame and the boss would hit for like uh, wow. something, I think seven or eight. Maybe, but I think Maverick has played this perfectly in terms of like being able to pace himself. This mountain giant effectively just taking out one of the biggest threats, and now Dr. Boom. Wow. Six damage boom bots, slightly above average. Slightly, yeah. Now Dr. Boom and Antonidas have been used, so it's basically down to the top decks, but there's still a lot of damage. That's a really yeah. huge draw. Pilot Sky Golem is nasty. Why would why didn't he coin out the Shredder? I would have liked to see that. Actually, if you coin out the Shredder, you probably don't play the free forever again. But don't you want to close the game next turn? Uh yeah, I guess so. You put out also more sticky minion too for him to deal with. Maverick needs to town the Sylvanas if he wants to survive. Life can still top deck one of the two fireballs remaining in the deck. Mm -hmm. He still has both, right? So many yeah, he still has both. Like this one is from Antonio. Uh oh, I think our client's a little bit bugged. I think this, the Sylvanas did go down, so we're going to leave real quick. Yeah. And rejoin as fast as possible because this game can be concluded soon, guys. Apologies. 
But uh, I think you're absolutely right. The Sylvanas could have high impact. And if it steals a really valuable minion, all of a sudden that burst is gone. What can Life Coach get from the 6-4 to make the game more interesting? Uh, to make the game more interesting? Yeah. Oh, man. I gotta admit, I haven't played much with Pilot Sky Golem. I've ignored that card so much. Um, Pete Lord? No. Pit Lord. We saw that earlier on the mainstream. Yeah, that's why I say. It's like one of the best stats you can get. Is it? 5 6 for 4 mana. It's pretty good. I mean, you can get pretty much anything else like the Yetis. I mean, you can. You see the 4 drops right here, too. You can get the Pilot Shredder and the Blast Mage. I think, I think one of the most interesting is like Baron Rivendare, like that Height was saying. If you get Baron Rivendare with Boombots and you just have cashed in for 16 damage Boombots. Life Coach could have just used the coin to get a Fireball. I think that costs him and then he could also use the coin to another power play. I I'm not sure. Oh, he loses the Violet Teacher. It's too bad. It's definitely the least Violet. Oh, I guess he can use uh, the Blast Mage still. It can be lethal over two turns if all Blast Mage is face. It's oh. gotta go quick. Going for the board control. And yeah, looks like he pings the, the right one. Sun Fury Protector. Still, again, a little bit clo too close for comfort here. Hmm. And Maverick draws the Iron Beak Owl, looks like. And he's got Jaraxxus in hand, too. So if his opponent tries to just burn him out and put him low, like at 4 or 5 hmm. HP, he might be able to heal up and seal out the game from there. I gotta admit, man, I think Maverick's playing excellently here. He can also Hellfire and set up a Giant, but does that put him in range of death? I guess he'd rather not do that and go for an easier trade. Yeah, the Iron Beak is insane. It's really hard, but now you have to think about closing the game. Right. And what's the best way to close the game? I think going for it... Yeah, Taurisan is okay. He wants to go to Taurisan sure. into low tip Giant into Jiraxis probably, after Life Coach uses his burst. But if Life Coach wanted to be more aggressive, he could just play Antonidas either one turn later or just use the coin Fireball or the coin just to get more Fireballs and uh, right. push Maverick. I think I would have done that for the sole reason that Maverick already used two heal bots and I would think that he doesn't have any more uh, heals. But I, I, I play really aggressive sometimes. Not sure if that's the best way to approach it. Man, Maverick's uh, card density in terms of his draws are high, uh, high impact. Like Jaraxxus, he's got the Dr. Boom. Uh, and he still has yet to hit a couple of other big threats, like his uh, other Twilight Drake and Mountain Giant. If Maverick counted the cards, he knows Life Coach only has... Uh, one, one card left, that's not the coin. One coin and something that he didn't use for a lot of time. So he might expect Fireball or Frostbolt. Right. So he probably should play around Fireball. But do you play around the top deck Fireball? I don't mm. think so. Oh, he, he wants to go greedy. I thought he was going to drop Dr. Boom here. Does he want to tap? That's insane. Tap would be really risky for the sole reason of uh, being able to fro fireball Frostbolt and win the game. Life Coach still has two fireballs. Oh wait, he has uh, Lothab. Lothab to stop it. So yeah, he can get away with it this turn. So he's going to Drax this next turn then, right? Oh, he can get away. Can he? Yeah? I don't think uh, I don't think Life Coach can win this turn. Oh yeah. Because of the Lothab. Yeah, it's insane. It's one damage off. No, it's two damage of lethal. Because the fireball will cost nine, so you couldn't use the coin either. That's a really smart. Again, Maverick's getting away with a lot. My I really like his really handlock play. Good. Yeah. Excellent play from the Belgian. Maverick is showing some really high skill. And now he's gonna heal up to 15 with Jaraxxus. Yeah, I and love put out way. two eight. Actually, he's gonna put out an insane amount of minions. He's and he's squeezing the life tab. The power of Emperor Thorson. Jeez, life coach. He's sitting back in his chair looking a little defeated here. Yeah. It's still to one. The series can go in both sides. Life coach uh, still not able to get the win with the mech mage. I know. The mech mage here has been scrubbing it up, honestly. I thought the mech mage was going to be able to do a lot more. But Maverick still has to win with Druid after this game. And life coach still has his own hand lock as well. So... By all means, the series is far from over. What if Life Coach brought <gasps> Zoo? Oh gosh. What did you say if Life Coach brought Zoo? If Life Coach brought Zoo, I think it would take just as long as it would be of a handlock game for Shrewd. <laughs> if you ask me. Shots fired. All right, so game, uh, let's see, that's game number three, three in the books here. 
And the Warlock from Maverick is out. What a, Again, that was really impressive. One of the best handlock games I've seen in a long time. I think the series is probably one of the best played all around. Yeah, both the, players played really well. Really good skill demonstrated on both ends here. Life Coach goes to take a break uh, for water. All right, so oh, start getting, going to toilet break. Okay. Probably has to pass a little bit of his frustration off. So uh, that means Life Coach is down to uh, the mech, or sorry, Maverick's down to Druid. Life Coach has to win with potentially Handlock or Demon Lock or whatever, it's Warlock deck, uh, with Mech Mage as well. And I know that Mech Mage is really problematic, especially if you're playing Secrets and the Pilot Sky Golem. Like, Druid yeah. has a hard time dealing with mech it. Mech Mage should be like install in versus Druid. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder what kind of Druid Maverick will bring, because you say he's part of the French community, which is uh, a little bit different. Have they have they found any other forms? Because I know like Druid basically has two kinds of builds now. You have one that's more around Emperor Thorazin, drawing a lot of cards, trying to see if you can win with that, or you just play like straight up fast, fast Druid. Sometimes you replace like Shredder with Violet Teacher if you're trying to be a little bit different. But other than that, it's pretty much fast Druid versus uh, Thorazin Druid, I guess. I think God, I was the only one that brought Ramp. Oh, that's true, Ramp Druid, like hardcore Ramp Druid. He had just Sarah and his Druid. And I'm like, dude. Don't say he had two Doomsayers and Ysera and the Emperor. It was like that absolutely was nuts. That absolutely was nuts. Ballsy. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Gar is out, which means that the only remaining member from Tempo Storm is uh, is hyped. And this is this is the is this the second place or the uh, first game of the group? It's the first game of the group. Okay. Oh, are you in the same group as this? Oh uh, no, no. Oh, you're in a different group. I'm in a different group. Oh, I'm, you're playing on the mainstream soon. Yeah, my, my group, my group is with Toy Day. I hope Mage. you don't miss your match, man. Uh, <laughs> it's no. starting soon. I, I heard Reyna had, uh, had the battle with the piñata, and they delayed with like something. Oh, oh man, Reyna had battle with the piñata, and I missed it. That's something that I want to cast too. That was a great duel. Because I'm pretty sure, like the piñata would win, right? Like Reyna Shots couldn't. Fired. Reyna couldn't actually. I mean. <laughs> Shots fired. I'm pretty sure, like, the, the Pinata's, uh, I don't know. It's good that he's not watching the secondary stream, probably. That's true. He's probably out playing CSGO or, or poker. At least you're still in Twitch. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to imagine a world where Raynad has enough strength to, to actually break open the Pinata. Break open the Pinata. And even then, that Pinata doesn't have enough sugar in it to balance out the salt levels of Raynad. Wow. This is a really important turn. If Maverick doesn't have the rough, Life coach just gets, gets the game, I think. That's right. Let's go ahead and hop on uh, Maverick's POV as well. Get that. And he does have the Wrath. Really he important card. Hmm. Let's see. So, a reasonable turn three play. Uh, doesn't have anything on turn four, and that could be uh, really devastating, considering that if Druid misses and has the hero power, that's going to be a, a lost tempo on the board, and Mech Mage can run away with it. I see this, going, this game going to RNG. If Maverick doesn't have a good play now, he'll just wait with the shade, and then Life Coach will play the Blast Mage. And if the Blast Mage hits the shade three out of four times, oh. which is roughly 20 something percent if I calculated last time correctly, I don't remember. Where. Well, the Keeper of the Grove draw was really important just to shut that possibility down. Because now he has a 2 4. It's, maybe the battle cry is important, maybe it isn't, but uh, the 2 4 on the board is, is definitely high impact. Do you think he attacks? Uh, either way, it won't shut down our Goblin Blast Mage. I would attack into the 1 2. Attacking the 1 2 is probably the right play. Mm -hmm. Maverick does it again. I think Maverick played flawless this whole series. Yeah. Did he make any misplay? I don't think so. Life well, he's he's not only made no misplays, but he's also made the correct reads. There's, there's also playing correct and then, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, guessing yeah, incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. But he's he also made the right reads, which is highly impressive. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh! Wow! wow. That's... Life Coach strikes back with a perfect spread there. Yeah. Really good control. <laughs> oh, man. Of course, uh, you know, we say that facetiously. Really difficult to always predict the outcome. Was... What, what do you think about that attack? I guess he doesn't want him to play in the swipe. Yeah, I, I think it's a really good attack. Like, trading as a mech mage is not that great unless you get huge value, or unless your opponent can get huge value on the next turn. Like, what can Maverick do on turn five to get huge value? 
the best value he can he could have gotten is savage or hero power, and that way you can kill both the five four and the two three. But ah, you are that's frozen. also cool too. You are frozen, so you cannot do yeah. that. This is actually something that I know Super JJ. He was here yesterday and talking about with you, talking yeah, yeah. about how he always regrets leaving the keeper rope if you're trying to be a little bit more aggressive. Yes. Because of savage war plays that allows it to trade up, or even better, take a better trade and the hero power. So this is a good way to play around it as well. Really, really good moves. Yes. Both players uh -oh. play really good. It's a Jeez, high intensity game. Come on, Blizzard. All right. All right, we're going to have to ditch this again. I love this series. It's really high, intense and high. Yeah. It's, high uh, I think this is a really educational one, too. And I think people aren't going to be paying attention to it as much because I know the massive amount of viewers are paying attention to the mainstream with, you know, your matches and other stuff. But uh, Maverick, I think, is going to be a sleeper to go really far in this tournament. If he beats Life Coach. Yeah, Life Coach, of, no, he's, he's one of the favorites, I think, to yeah. definitely do well. But like, Life Coach is yeah. really confident in his Warlock. So if he wins this game, his Warlock, he knows how to play every, every, everything. Versus everything. You think he's not as confident as Mech Mage? No, he's confident in his Mech Mage, but Warlock is his most confident deck. Gotcha. It's, it's his deck. Do you just sack the 5 4 and just drop the Sky Golem? I think so, yeah. No, yeah, why not? You traded the 2 3 in. Then you sack the 5 4 into the Sylvanas. Mm. All I know is that I want to set up the best boom possible. Because on curve. But your opponent does have the big game hunter. I mean, Maverick does have a lot of the appropriate responses. As much as he's played well, he's also drawn appropriate for the, the situation. He hasn't really missed his curve too much. Wow. He's going for something. He wants to get the damage in, huh? Actually, he's got two Frost Bolts, right? So maybe he can really squeeze in a push for lethal here. Wow. He's got 5, uh, oh, he 10, one. 12 damage next turn, assuming nothing changes. 13, I think. Oh, yeah. right, the hero power. Um, the force of nature will have to be coming out here to clear the board. Fireball does it? That's right, fireball does end the game. It's exactly it, though. Let's see. No. And if not, you can just trade into the Sylvanas and right. play Boom. But do you play Boom or do you play the Sky Golem? Oh, come on. It's got to be Dr. Boom. You have the direct no. damage, right? No. I mean, uh, you, you know that the opponent has the big game, Hunter. Come still, on, Artie. You're, still. You're cheating. Still. This is called caster hacks. You still. have to play the Dr. Boom on curve. Going Next turn, you can pilot Sky Golem and Hero Power. Sky Golem is so good. I guess you could Sky Golem and Clockwork Gnome. I yeah. guess that does fill out the curve, too. That's insane. Like, you s kind of set up for Leto. Like, let's say he Hero Powers the Clockwork Gnome. You have exactly Leto with Sky Golem, Frostbolt, Hero Power. Right. And he didn't play a Taunt earlier, so he doesn't have a Taunt. Ah, okay. So That's a really good going for Dr. Point. Boom, you lose to BGH. Going for Sky Golem, what do you lose to? Swipe? He could have swiped the, the, the turn with 5-4 Blast Mage if he had Swipe. But you also get the Boom Boss. The Boom Boss can have such high impact, too. And, it and you have the better trace, so the Pi Sky Golem is even better. Right? The Pi Sky, Sky Golem might be able to have a stronger board resilience. Because if he plays Big Game Hunter, he has three more or five more mana to play stuff. Assuming he doesn't hero power. And then that only leaves him a Druid of the Claw. I mean, this is a, an insane read from Life Coach. Like, I, I'm actually super impressed. And I, and I shouldn't be at this point because I think he's been able to make good plays. But what a draw again. <laughs> Swipe. But what comes out of that? Pit Lord? Pit Lord, yeah. What if it's just like a Yeti straight up? Oh, that's definitely below average. That's usually the, the stats one. come out around 4-4 uh, four, four on average. Or usually 8 stats. I think now you have to play Boom. I mean, yeah. Boom is pretty good too. Like, last turn was one of the turns where you don't play Dr. Boom on 7. I'm really impressed. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to resist, right? Because <laughs> your Druid's at 11 health. It's one you of have those, a clear board. If, it's one of those plays that appear really obvious, but are not that obvious. Like, there are so many situations like this in many tournaments. If you remember the play, the game I played versus Trifro mm -hmm. in the other tournament, where he consecrated my board, where if he went for low tip, he would have won. Oh, yeah, that was recent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Last weekend. I forgot. Xfinity? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Big Game Hunter needs to absorb some, sh uh, some damage. Normally, you don't want the revenge kill. Let's see what he gets. Not bad. Um, Frostbolt can still hit face for... For seven mana and then hero oh, powers, four man. damage. He needs four to the face. It's Let's possible. see the boombots. Let's see the boombots. So you want to use boombot into the shield mini bot though first, right? Um, do you? So that way, because that way yeah, the yeah. divine shield can't absorb like but four damage. That way you cannot kill uh, something securely. 
you don't have guarantee that you kill the BGH in the worst case scenario. I think going to the BGH gives you more chances of finishing the game and also 100% kills the monster. How about if you... Uh, no, that's too inconsistent. I was like, what's the chances if he uh, attacks face with both and then ping his own bop? I think that's a little bit too risky considering the circumstances. Because um, what happens is if the, if the worst case scenario, right, is if the boom bot hits the... If he collides into the... The mini bot and it hits both head for one, then he's in an awkward spot. But at worst, he could still clean up one of these minions by pinging it and then okay. trading. I think Black Witch will make the best mathematical play. Like, <laughs> he, he'll think of God, it. God, RDU. I, I think uh, it's it's really difficult because it's a lot to calculate. I really like attacking to the Divine Shield. <sighs> wow, he hits one of the both head for four. He's four on phase now. Wow. Wow, maximum damage. Wow. And this Mirenity is so problematic unless Maverick somehow summons the Zombie Chow. No, he doesn't get it. Uh, Maverick can still go for Azure Drake and draw the draw for Swipe. Well, or he can trade in at worst. In fact, he can. Yeah, I think you play Azure Drake. You can here. trade in pretty easily. Maverick again goes for the best play. Wow. wow. The That's... Sludge Belcher here. Maverick's looking a little uncomfortable himself. Is it huge? I mean, that's pretty much the biggest you can get for five mana. This gives like, what, like two or three times to draw into Fireball. Oh, oh my god, that's gonna do it. And the series is tied. The Fireball top decks have been one of the main stories of this tournament, the way some people have been pulling it out. That yeah, was what the, an incredible game. That was the fastest life push turn. I yeah, so. instant call. No need to rope on that. And it's too true. This series is just perfect. Yeah, really well done. I mean, you can say that Life Coach got, of course, lucky, but there were some really good top yeah, decks yeah. from Maverick. The swipes, uh, getting that sludge belcher to stop any pressure, uh, making sure that he had the appropriate responses. Really fun on both sides. Uh, I, I feel like there hasn't been any one-sided games, too. Starting with Paladin versus Druid, it's been contested all the way through. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I was hearing Arctos' laugh in the background, it's funny. <laughs> Never mind, sorry. Um, I think the matchups were really good, and 50-50 most of the time. And both players <laughs> played them really well, like, Maverick played perfectly. Life Coach made, like, one questionable call in the Magmage game, but in rest of the series were, like, Antonitis. perfectly. Like, right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if this was the final. It, 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 in terms of the play, it's been outstanding, and uh, we're going to go into game number five here as uh, we have Life Coach versus Maverick. Once again, Warlock versus Druid. Who's going to take it? I have to side again with Warlock, even though I know Druids have been trying to squeeze in a lot of combo and pressure, but I just think like if they don't have the answer one time, they get run over. As I said, Life Coach, if you put Life Coach on Handlock versus a Druid, he's probably favored a bit, but a normal Handlock would just lose to Druid usually. Like, Sorry guys, I got to restart. I messed up. <laughs> it bugs. Damn it, Froden. All right, but we saw the opening hands with the Twilight Drake uh, and the Owl and the Watcher. Twilight Drake is actually really good versus Druid because even if they keep it, they don't have the tools to kill the 4-1 unless they have a Wild Growth or, a wild growth or an Inner Wave Wrath or something like that. And it gets sketchy. It gets really sketchy sometimes. Yeah, so you, normally to most silences like Urshock, it just destroys and get, you lose so much tempo. But... Speaking of grabbing the early game tempo, we have an Innervate available for Maverick, and he has the Keeper for the, do you the like, Drake. Do you like using the Innervate? Maverick is now thinking of not using anything on turn 2, hope he, hoping he gets something on turn 3, and he wants to go turn 4, Keeper, Innervate, Rough on the, on, the, on the Drake. Seems reasonable. That's like playing ahead a lot. Yeah. He's, he's really calculating his play. Most people would love to capitalize on Innervate. Uh, Zombie Chow, you know, it, it helps control the state of the board. The one health on the Twilight Drake might not make as big of a difference as that two damage on the Zombie Chow. Now he can coin the Shredder out mm -hmm. and still have Keeper next turn. That's insane. Right. And the, the Pilot Shredder also contests the 2-3 the Zombie Chow. Yeah. Lining up pretty good so far for Maverick. Well, it contested, but then the Mortal Coil it contested on Life, which is side. Oh, we see the Void Call. That's mm. insane. But there's no demons. <laughs> Still insane, like, Maverick is a really good player. He'll play around the demons. Oh, right, so he could bluff and then, you know, oh. kind of get the silence out on the Void Caller. Life Coach played poker, so... It's true, like, what if he what if he feels like he has to silence the Void Caller, but there's no demons coming out? This is a, this is a really high-level move here, and yeah. if Maverick falls for it and silences it, 
It's really heads up. Later. Then, uh, then it's a brand new game because I thought, you know, for example, if you would be able to silence the Twilight Drake, he Druid would seize the board completely. Yeah. Let's see what. Innervate Sylvanas. Is that what he wants to do? I think so. I would. I I thought because he has Doctor Boom uh, that you might also want to consider Innervating Doctor Boom. I think the best place to go Keeper of the Grove Silence the three four trade the four three into the three four and the next time go Innervate Doctor Boom into playing Sylvanas turn six. Wow, what a sick call. Life Coach nods in approval because that's exactly what he was going for. Life Coach with the poker play. This was, I mean, I guys, this was the series of the tournament for me. And, you know, you guys are privileged to be able to watch this on the secondary stream uh, and keep it a secret from the rest of the people. But I expect firmly a lot of congratulations to whoever wins because this is highly, yeah. highly impressive. Now Life Coach Immortal Coil and Azure Drake. I think Immortal Coil before because it doesn't matter. Right. Actually. Well, it might. Because what if the Mana Worm comes out of that, uh... Oh, not the Mana Worm, sorry, the Mana Wraith. You can kill it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Never Damn mind. Damn it, Froden. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Rank 15 and A. <laughs> That's I'm, right, I'm rank 15, let's just he, end it there. Froden is rank 15 legend. Shh. How can you not see that, man? Sorry about that. <laughs> ah, it doesn't really change much. That's kill a Mana Wraith. Yeah, I guess that is mana race status. Really sick bluff from Life Coach. These bluffs only work on tournaments. <laughs> Whenever I stream and I do that, they they they, do, they just trade. Uh, and I'm like, oh uh -huh. my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you stream. <laughs> it doesn't work. Not on when ladder. you play regularly. Even if, when I play regularly, they just there trade. People don't care on ladder. On tournaments, it's a really it's really different. This I 100% approve of. Innervating Doctor Boom out on turn five. That's why I thought the plan plan is from the beginning. Okay, if he's gonna go for Hellfire, what do you think of Hellfire in before to tank some Boombas with your Twilight Drake so you can get... What if you lose the Drake? Actually, you don't care. You want the bombs on your face because you want the Molten Salt. Hellfire allows you to tap, um, or if you're taking a lot of damage, maybe just play Ancient Watcher. But Ancient Watcher actually doesn't do much. You don't have any... I guess you can silence it to have it be a 4-5, so there's that. But you don't have any Taunt Givers. And ideally, as Handlock, you'd like to keep tapping to keep uh, improving your hand. Because you'd be using two cards this turn and not gaining any. <clears throat> and meanwhile, on the Druid side, there is Emperor Thor's and, and the combo. So he can play that in, um, back to back. So even if uh, Warlock clears, there is that combo on turn seven, because that'll be from nine to seven mana. So this is uh, an opportunity for Maverick to really go for some big pressure play. He's been planning a, definitely a few steps ahead. And if the board ever gets too tight, he has Sylvanas and um, you know Wrath to help control the state of the board. All right, how much will these boom bots do? That's the big key. Life which runs as much as possible. Four is below average, so relatively unlucky, but I guess uh, at least it wasn't two. No, Maverick threatens lethal. Right. 21 damage. But he does have a uh, heal bot. He does have uh, ways to silence. He has Doom Guard as well, which also stings. You don't really want to use that. You probably mm. are forced to, to Doom Guard. Doom Guard. Doom Guard looks really bad. Does he just it's ignore so combo? So tough. I don't think you can ignore a combo at this point. No way. I think Life Coach is. I mean, it's, gonna maybe play it's not even about ignoring combo, but just like the fact that Thorson's on board and your opponent has five cards. It's like maybe that's your bigger threat that you have to worry about. It's difficult to, to calculate. If he doesn't do it with Doom Guard, the only else way you can do it is to silence it and then play something else, whether Ancient, oh, uh, sorry, um, the Sludge Belcher or the Antique Heal Bot. It's really close. I'm not really sure. Mm. It's so weird and so awkward. He goes for the Doom Guard. Yeah, Doom Guard to try and control the Thors and keep it under control. He loses. Heelbot and Twilight Drake. Will Maverick just combo his face <laughs> next turn to show that he has a Keeper of the Grove or something like that? Wow. That would be like super nice. That would be, that would be like, I don't have the balls to do that. <laughs> Not like, against Molten Giants and uh, the like, possibility. But he did just toss the anti Keelbot. Yeah. That's like, actually a really valid, uh, valid What else do you do? Do you just play Sylvanas and give it to the Doom Guard? Get the... Ancient Watcher. Watcher? Watcher is not that good. You need Keeper for it. Right. And you already used one Keeper. He can Wrath uh, to improve his hand, or he can Wrath and play Druid of the Claw. Oh, I guess Ancient uh, Sylvanas still is the same thing. A little Sylvanas bit better for the mana. Still threatens later. Yeah. 
Hmm. Oh, the counter Sylvanas. Hmm. But the problem is that Sylvanas is a little bit too expensive. Like, left Kush played around combo last turn, so I think he'll play around combo this turn. That's why Tarusan is really good and broken, probably, because it's really hard to play around something that you don't know when your opponent drew that, that card. Yep. Sludge Belcher is his best pet of survival here. If he, if he taps, does he die? What about silencing and defender of Argusing? Oh, that's also a possibility too. And you can also tap. Because it, yeah, because what happens is you can count taunt health effectively as your actual health at bot at the bare minimum. So he'd be still at uh, eight taunt health plus fourteen, so twenty-two. So Sylvanas, like even if he had. Uh, even if an innervate, he would still not have enough to kill because he has to go through the the owl and lose damage. You're really hard. Let's see the I, I will. Ropes. The thing is, if Step he in. does, he needs another taunt. Oh, he gets sludge belcher number two. Oh, he just plays belcher. All right, that's correct. Wild growth is dead. Dead. Um. Dread of the Clan is the only player you go for combo. Again, going for combo is super risky. You saw right. the heal bot. But how much can you push in? Right, also because your opponent's going to be coming up on 9 for Draxus, so if you use the combo and he heals back up... You can push 12 damage with combo. Right. Nah. It's 2 damage off lethal. Where shall I, strike? I mean, Druid's pretty straightforward. Versus Life which I think it's not that bad pushing damage. Mm -hmm. Because he will get scared and uh, make the safe play. He already used the heal bot. I'm not sure. BGH, Game Hunter is pretty well. dead. You can tap and play double Molten I, for 6 mana, and then for 3 right. mana you can BGH one of them. <laughs> nah. I guess BGH is like in case the Giant gets stolen in some capacity, because he's still... I guess he could silence Sylvanas here if he really didn't want to do with it, but he still has to be worried about dying to uh, some combo pressure, so he has to calculate how much damage which, uh, which can scale. So if everything gets off at full damage... Right now it's 27, so he has to try either control the board or effectively out HP that count. I know what Life Coach would think. Like now he will think that if he survives with just playing Belcher and Molten, the, if he survives the combo, and if he doesn't, he'll just play Molten Argus and go for the risky V50-50. It is really risky though because Sylvanas is weak. It is not that risky because you have the BJH if he steals the Giant. So I think going Molten Defender is the best play. Of course, it might be better if you go for the Belcher Molten, because right. you can make him use the combo too. But, but if think, you die to it, that, it's I think he good. might die to Belcher Does he die? Molten, right? Oh my god, he's tapping. Oh, he can play all. He can play all. Let's see if he has time. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh no, oh. Life Coach ran out of time. Oh man, that does it. And the oh blemish on his record for oh the tournament series has costed him due to time constraints maverick will advance oh my god a desperation moment here and uh, life coach came up a little bit short unfortunately oh wow oh what, my god what an unceremonious way to end this uh, otherwise fantastic series he had the sun fury he could go right. and double down some fury and mm -hmm. that would ju just win him the game next turn i threw, I threw some fury yeah, uh, he's telling Maverick right now because uh, yeah. he realized that he had an opportunity like, to... Even if to Life Coach would have lost that Sylvanas yep. trade, he could still be GH next turn and still win the game. Oh Jeez. my god. It well, was a really, really intense series. It's Because it could have gone on for a long time. Oh you never know god. what could have been drawn from the Warlock side to really keep him alive even more. Um, if he had a Duraxis, or if he had like, if he forced his opponent to use combo because there's too much pressure on the board, and vice versa. Plus, yeah, like you said, he had the Sun Fairy and another Defender of Argus to keep uh, the defense going up. So, we'll never know. Uh, we just know right now that Maverick wins the series three two. But I have to give it to him. I think he played flawlessly this series. Yeah, I think Maverick played perfectly all the series. Absolutely. Really impressive stuff. Uh, I think so. This is the first match of the group, correct? So uh, he's going to advance to the winner's match. Life coach will wait in the losers, unfortunately, but definitely has a chance to bounce back. That's why I love this tournament being double elimination. Both players deserve to go through. And we'll Unfortunately, see. only one can at the moment. Who's the other two players waiting on the other end? We have Ecop and, Masan. and Masan waiting on the other end, so that's going to be coming up on stream. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really fun. Really I know I did. Series, yeah. 
Absolutely. So it's time for uh, me and Ardu to eat our dinner, or Ardu to get ready for his match. I'm gonna play Toy down the mainstream. So All right. Good luck, man. I'm prepared. I think. Hope you get uh, amped up, cause that series is really good stuff. Exercise the the brain. <laughs> All right. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, more Sea Story Cup action here at the Take TV apartment. <laughs> 